A researcher when starts a research sets objectives and also states hypothesis. Sometimes there are no hypothesis but objectives or research questions. In order to achieve these objectives or to test the hypothesis, there is a need for some kind of a data. On the basis of data, it can be proved, unproved or objectives can be achieved. Now how do we collect data and what is the data collection and what kind of instruments can be used for data collection? Some of these questions must be answered. We will see what is the data collection and which are the instruments. A data collection is a process by which the researcher collects information required for answering the research questions or the testing of hypothesis or even achieving the objectives. But basically it is a process of information collection. Now data has to be collected but there are some questions which the researcher has to answer. What data has to be collected? When this data has to be collected? Who will collect this data? And how this data will be collected? Some of these pertinent questions need to be answered before one starts for data collection. Now the researcher has to answer what methods of data collection should be used. And while answering these questions, he or she has to keep in mind what is the research problem or what are the stated hypothesis. There can be positive hypothesis, there can be null hypothesis, but the hypothesis are there which need to be tested. So the data collection methods change if your hypothesis are different. Then another criterion is research design. What is your research design? What are the methods? What are the tools? How you are planning to analyze? All these questions, who is your sample, what is the population? So research design also matters in selecting the method for data collection. Another important thing is that there are variables about which we collect the information. So the nature of these variables is also very important. We are talking about dependent variable, we are talking about independent variable, but what is their nature? Are they quantifiable? or you want to use them for qualitative analysis. The moment the variables differ, your method of data collection differs. Method of data collection also varies according to variety of criteria. One is about degree of structuredness. Sometimes we use the instruments which are very structured. So only those questions, only in that format, only using that language need to be used. So structured uh, tools are prepared. Sometimes the tools are semi-structured. Sometimes the tools are unstructured. When, as and when you start discussing, data comes apart. But, and then you can frame your questions for further probing as per the discussion taking the direction. So these are totally unstructured instruments. So the structuredness of instrument of data collection also helps you in collecting data. Another characteristic of this method of data collection is degree of quantifiability. We are talking about scores. We are talking about quantity. And how to quantify? Is the instrument, is the method of data collection helping you to quantify it? Or you don't need quantifiable data? Accordingly, you can select the instrument. Of course, you know that there are two types of methodologies. One is quantitative methodology, other is qualitative methodology. And both differ in their process, in their data collection, in their way of analysis, and naturally in way of using statistical techniques. So naturally, the quantifiability of data collection method matters. The third quality is degree of obtrusiveness. Obtrusiveness means to what extent they are important, they are verifiable, they are visible. Basically, obtrusiveness refers to the visibility. So some of these criteria must be kept in mind while selecting the data collection methods. As I said earlier, there are two types of data collection instruments which depend on the methodology, research methodology which you want to use. Either they are qualitative research methods or they are quantitative research methods. 
Of course, there are mixed methods, but mixed methods combine or juxtapose qualitative on quantitative or quantitative on qualitative. But basically, there are two major uh, thoughts. And naturally, the data collection methods also would differ if you are selecting qualitative methodologies or you are selecting quantitative methodologies. Now, for example, if you are interested in finding out the relationship between school environment, home environment and their impact or their effect on scholastic achievement. Here, what we are interested in? We are definitely interested in scoring quantifiable data. We would quantify the home environment, we would quantify the school environment and we would also see scholastic achievement in terms of scores. And then these scores will help us to analyze the data collected so that we answer our research problems. Now this is a quantifiable method, quantitative method. Then naturally we will have to use data collection tools or data collection methods which would also be quantifiable. Another example from qualitative analysis, we are interested to know. Now for example, every school has used ICT, information and communication technology. How they are doing it? Does it have any impact on students learning? Has it changed the way teachers teach? You want to answer some of these questions. But if you start quantifying, if you go to 1000 schools and do that, yes, that is one way. But the researcher may also be interested in visiting schools where he or she knows that ICT has impacted and where he or she knows ICT has not impacted. You select some schools and study them in depth. Go there, observe, talk to students, talk to teachers and get the feel of it. And out of this data, you identify the trends. Here you are not interested in quantifying. You will be doing a qualitative research by using a case study method. Naturally, your tools will be different. So, there are different types of tools which are used under quantitative methods and under qualitative methods. Let us see which are the tools or which are the instruments used for quantitative data collection. There are a variety of tools available to a researcher if he or she wants to quantify. For example, very well known tool is questionnaire, another is interview and for interview we also prepare interview schedule, we prepare interview guide. The third could be observation, it is a technique, observation interviews are techniques and for these techniques we use variety of tools. So for observation we use observation schedule, there is a checklist, there is a rating scale, we also use variety of test, for example, intelligent test, achievement test, diagnostic test. So, these are quantifiable tools. We also use inventories, for example, if you want to see adjustment, what kind of social, emotional, ad scholastic adjustment is done by the student, we give the inventories. So, inventories are also quantifiable. So, these are the tools which we use for quantitative data collection methods. Let us see some of the guidelines which are common for all types of instruments. Of course, each instrument has its own characteristic, has advantages and disadvantages and we definitely select one over the other because keeping in mind their purpose and their advantages. But there are some common characteristics which must be kept in mind. So these are the guidelines for preparing any kind of instrument. First is that the instrument must be suitable for a function for which you are using it. This is also called a validity. So any instrument which you prepare must be valid. Valid means it must test or collect data for which it is prepared. It should not collect something else. Then another criterion of any good tool is that it must be based on a theoretical framework. This is a research tool we are talking about. And the researcher has already created, prepared a theoretical framework. This framework helps him or her in going ahead, answering the research questions or testing the hypothesis. Now, if you do not use this research theoretical framework and prepare any type of tool, it is of no use. So, one has to keep in mind the theoretical framework with which you have started your research. Third is the content of the instrument must be appropriate to test the hypothesis 
or answer the research question. Every tool has some content. This content may be stated in terms of statements, in terms of questions, in terms of opinions, but there is a content. Now this content must help the researcher to identify, to collect data which would help in answering those research questions. One more important aspect of any instrument is that it must be reliable. We will study in detail what is reliability, but here I would like to share with you that reliability refers to its trustworthiness. That means if you give this test or use this tool today and if you use it after 15 days on the same subjects, it must give you the same results. It should not give you something very different results. If it is giving very different results, that means people are interpreting it in a different manner. That means your tool is not reliable. This is also called test reliability. We test the reliability of a tool by giving it again after 15 days, after one month or after four days, whatever time you think appropriate. But it should give the same results. This is called reliability. Any instrument for research data collection must be reliable. It also must be free of bias. Researcher bias is a very important thing in any research because researcher is interested in getting some kind of results. Yes, you are interested, you want to find out the relationship, but you must not think that the relationship should be of this type. If you go with that kind of mindset, then it reflects in your data collection tool, in your analysis, in your discussion, everything. This should be totally taken out. Researchers bias should be minimized and that is why even in the tool you should not have this bias. Bias towards one opinion or another. We should be neutral. When there should not be a bias, there also should not be any hints. That means if the researcher is interested that certain opinion comes up, then we should not be asking, do you not think so? This type of question should not be asked because you are pressurizing, you are hinting at something which you want, you are desirous of. So any instrument you prepare, this should be free of your thought processes. Any tool which we prepare, any instrument which we prepare should be used on a particular respondent. Of course, we conduct sometimes focus groups in qualitative methodologies, focus group interviews where all the respondents sit together, but that is a different tool. But otherwise, whenever we administer a tool individually, independently, that means we expect a respondent's response independently. So your tool should not provide something that somebody else can have influence on your respondent. We are talking about tool, we are also talking about use of tool the research methodology for data collection. So we have to take care while administering the tool that the respondent does not get influenced by someone else. We have seen common characteristics and common guidelines for preparing any instrument. As we go along, we will be studying variety of other tools. We have already listed them, checklist, questionnaire, observation schedule, interview schedule, test, inventories and many others. So while selecting any tool, we have to be cautious, we have to be careful and in our other sessions, we will study how to prepare a tool, what are its advantages, what is its purpose and how to use it very cautiously. The ultimate desire of a researcher is to collect data which is appropriate, which is useful to test the hypothesis or to answer the research questions or to achieve the research objectives. Thank you.